Hey everybody, this is the second segment of chapter 2 in historical geology and the last uh, segment I stopped in this, with the sedimentary structure so this is where I'm going to start. The, the sedimentary structures are going to give us extremely important information again about the sedimentary environment. Um, these are larger features in the sedimentary rocks that will uh, they are forming as the sediment is settling down. So these are giving us information about the environment at the time of the formation. So they are really important for us. Uh, let's see. The first one is really the layering. But you can hear not only layering, but also stratification. Um, layering, stratification, bedding. A whole lot of words about it. The bedding basically and lamination or, or stratification just means that you can see color differences in the rocks as it goes or some kind of difference. It could be color difference, it could be grain size different, it could be like different rocks in one layer to the next. So the layering just tells you that in the environment there were like major changes through time so you see different colors or grain size or different rocks. So it's very, very important because then you would know that the water depth changed, might be the whole environment have changed, like you become a continent from an ocean environment. So these are very important uh, information you can get out of the sedimentary rocks. The next one is the mud cracks. The mud cracks are also very important because you can find mud cracks in any kind of sedimentary rock sequence, but when you do see mud cracks, remember we learned in physical geology, what do they mean? Yes, usually you will see mud cracks in clay when the clay gets dry. I should say wet and then dry, wet and then dry. Because what happens with the clay mineral? When the clay is wet, remember it swells, it becomes much bigger. And when it dry, it shrinks. When it shrinks, that's when it, it cracks. I took this picture actually in, in Belize uh, and it was right at the sea level. So that was an area where the, the sediment could get wet and dry periodically. So therefore I saw this amazing, perfect, mud cracks and you see there are some plants and everything here so it's really really very nice environment so when you do go and see that in the rocks just like that and these rocks are, are it says right here they are actually it doesn't say the the age of these rocks but they are millions of years old like hundreds of millions of years old and and you know that those are mud cracks, so therefore you know that it had to form in an area where, where it was exposed and it could periodically get wet and dry. So you know the only place it can happen is very, very, very close to the surface. So it's a very important inf information to see mud cracks in the, in the sedimentary sequence. The next one is the, the cross bedding. And the cross bedding the cross bedding is also very important information depending on as you can see here the cross bedding can happen in in different ways like it could be uh, water carried or it could be wind carried when you have water carried then it could be like in a river or it could be in the tidal zone if it wind carried I mean it also could be close to the beach like on the beach or it could be in a desert and it's easy to separate if, if, if it was wind carried, the cross bedding. And remember, if you didn't have physical geology, ask me about that. When you have cross bedding, depending on if each layer is about the same thickness or they are different thicknesses, um, if they are very different thickness, thicknesses, that usually means that they were carried by wind. And especially if each layer ha has a different just a little bit different direction in the cross beds. Like I'm drawing this one right here and like let's say this one is much. Because you know the wind usually not always coming exactly the same way. It is somewhat the same because of the trade winds. But it could be just a little bit different. And then this would be like that. 
So usually when you see this, that just means most of the time that it was wind carried, uh, like in a desert. Like this one here is at Zion National Park, and it's a typical wind carried desert sandstone. And, and the whole vast is basically are full of this kind of crossbedded sandstone. So it's quite important. I actually have another slide here that is uh, Canyon du Chez. And you can see these are absolutely gorgeous, big crossbedded sandstones. Um, and I don't know if you remember, but we also learned about like the river. If, if it's a river carried sandstone, usually it's gonna be the layers are more uniform and the angles inside the layers are also pretty uniform. So if it was in the river, they are gonna be rather like this. Now, if it was carried by the tide, then you're going to see the so-called herringbone crossbedding, and it looks like this. In one layer, it's going this way, and in the other layer, it's going like this way. So that just means that the tide carried it when it was going out, when that way, when it was coming back, it was the other way. So you end up having this kind of layers. The next sedimentary structure is the ripple mark. When you think of the cross bedding, that's like uh, from the side of the layers, but the ripple marks is happening on the bedding surface. And I, don't, I haven't mentioned the bedding surface. When you have a sedimentary bed, this here is the bedding plane. Like your bed, the sheets are your, uh, the plane. That's the bedding plane. And then this is the, the, you know, the layer. This is your bed. So the surface is what we always call bedding plane. So when you go to the beach, basically, and you walk on the beach, you basically walk on the bedding plane. But when you look at the cross beds, you, you see them right here. But on the surface, you see them as ripple marks. So... This side you, you, you find the cross bedding and on this side you find the ripple marks. So that is the bedding plane where you see the ripple marks. We have two kinds of ripple mark. One is the current ripple. In this case, one side of the ripple mark is longer than the other side. Longer, shorter, longer, shorter. So it's asymmetrical and you can tell which way the current was going because the longer side is always showing the current direction. On the other hand, if you are on the beach, then remember the tide is coming back and forth, waves are coming back and forth. So therefore, you will see wave ripples. That means that the crest is in the middle and both sides is, is about the same distance, right here, right here. So you can have current ripples or wave ripples. And on this slide, you can see a current ripple. What do you think, which way the current went? You're right, it went from down up. And you can tell because this is the longer side, shorter, longer, shorter, longer. So therefore the current was going this way. This is really useful because you can you can actually tell which way a river flew, or you can tell a lot of you can tell if it was ocean, you can tell if it was a river, or you can tell if it was a desert, or if it was a beach environment. So these are very important um uh, the sedimentary structures are going to give you very, very useful uh, information. Look at this one. What do you think this one is? I mean, it says right there, so it's easy. But you, you see how the, the crests are right in the middle, and they are very, very symmetrical. So this, this sediment here was formed on the beach. It's really cool because you know it right away. How about this one? Yeah, these are wave ripple also. So this formed on the beach and you can see there is some tra trace fossils going through there. This here is what we call graded bedding. When you have graded bedding that means that you have uh, a turbulent current. A lot of the times this means a big earthquake. When you have an earthquake it shakes the shallow water environment and all the sediment actually as a turbulent current goes down into deeper water. When it settles down the first sediment which settles down, which one is going to go down first? 
yeah you're right the heavier grains so the big grains are gonna settle down first and the fine grains settle down last so this is kind of interesting to know this here is a so-called graded bed it's inside one layer and the the largest grain size is on the bottom and the finest is on top this is what we call graded bedding most of the time this tells you that this environment was plate tectonically is uh, pretty active and these are trace fossils trace fossils if you see this you know what do you know right away that you know that this rock formed in relatively shallow environment because it was a tetrapod it was walking to get fish or get water or so therefore you know it was close to the surface and you can tell what kind of animal animal was walking there that it had four one two three four four uh, toes and stuff like that so it's quite important that's another trace fossils this is when uh, the clams living on the beach drill into the rocks of course they don't have like a screwdriver they do uh, make the holes by organic acid so they they release organic acid and that breaks down the rock so they can actually sit there you can imagine life here like as a clam it's pretty boring but when when it becomes rock this is what you see whenever the whenever the clam drill that rock it will fill up with different sediments so it gets preserved completely right there and the very last thing we have to talk about is the maturity and the maturity is going to tell us about the different rocks and their composition. If you think of sedimentary rocks, you can have a rock which has every kind of grains in it. Like if you have arcos, you know, it has cave feldspar, quartz, possibly biotite, muscovites. And if you are close to the, the formation, the source of the formation means the mountains, then all those grains are still there. So the transportation distance wasn't a big deal. It hasn't gone far away. So we call it it's immature. But at the same time, by the time it makes it to the beach, like Virginia Beach, have you been in Virginia Beach? Yeah, mo most of you did. What kind of sediment is at the beach? Yeah, this is, uh, it's most of the time nothing but quartz sandstone. So by the time it makes, the sediment makes it to the beach, all the minerals which are less durable than the quartz are weathered away. So the, your sediment becomes more and more more quartz rich. So the most quartz rich the sediment, the more mature it is. This is important to remember and it is extremely important to know that your continent is big enough that where the sediment starts at the source, by the time it makes it to the, to the beach where it's settled down in the ocean, it's mature. So that means there is a long distance from the source, uh, source area to the beach, means the continent was relatively big size. Now, if you are in an area like Japan, the those are islands, so the continent is really, really small. So when the mountain erodes, the sediment forms, it doesn't have enough distance to, for every mineral to weather away. So you're going to have immature sediment in the ocean so this is very important because you can actually relate to the size of the continent so this is the maturity is a very important thing you got to remember it all of the sedimentary structures and all this stuff we just went through you have to remember and now we are at the classification of sedimentary rocks so now when we go through the stuff and you're gonna get a rock in the lab you will have to be able to tell me all this uh, characteristics so you have to see all this stuff it's quite important you will have a lab quiz on this so the classification of sedimentary rocks again again this is just a, a reminder from last semester you already kind of know this so I assume that you know it but I am going through remember we divide the, the sedimentary rocks into two big group one is the clastic or detrital sedimentary rocks what is important about them Yes, that they form through physical weathering. So when you look at a clastic sedimentary rock, you will be able to tell uh, the parent rock, what was the original rock, because you see the pebbles and all that good stuff. On the other hand, the other group is the chemical or biochemical sedimentary rocks. 
Now, these guys form by chemical weathering. That means that they're completely uh, dissolved into chemical com components and then it precipitated out from water or somewhere and become a brand new rock and you have no way of telling what kind of uh, parent rock they are coming from. And in this case, in case of the classic or detrital sedimentary rocks, the further uh, classification goes by grain size. When you have pebble or gravel size grain size, which remember is larger than two millimeter, and the pebbles or the gravels are like uh, rounded in it, we call it conglomerate. Now, what kind of environment will you have conglomerate? You got um, every kind of grains. The sorting is not good because you'll have smaller, bigger, every kind of grain size present. You will have um, rounded grains, but still that just means that the it's, it's relatively close to the source and it's going to be immature. So that means that it formed close to the mountain. Okay, that's, these are important because I'll give you rocks and you'll have to be able to tell me where did it form. Did it form on a beach? Did it form in a deep water environment? Did the rock form in uh, close to the mountain, which the mountain is the source area. The next one is still the gravel size category. And if the grains are angular, the big grains are angular, we call it braccia. And remember, we learned about this. So usually the braccia also forms in high energy. When I say energy, high energy environment means that you have wind, you have storms, you have, um, if you're on the beach, then it's really wavy, high energy environment. So the braccia is typical, um, big size grains where the grains are angular, the sorting is really bad, you have every kind of grain size in it, um, and so therefore it's very mature, therefore it means it's very high energy, very close to the source area. It didn't get transported, it didn't get really sorted a lot. So basically this is the most immature sedimentary rock. It's for sure always right at the mountain. Might have been glacier which brought it down or could have been a alluvial fan or something like that. So I guess I have to stop because again I'm at 17. So this is the end of the second segment. I'll see you in the next segment.